Friday practice in Mexico is over and the fastest driver of the day was Max Verstappen, which might not really be a surprise, but there was definitely a few big surprises today, and we're going to be talking about all of that plus more as we do a data analysis from practice. Now let's get to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about Aston Martin, McLaren, Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. Practice in Mexico is all important, as the circuit provides one of the biggest challenges to the teams all year. As I mentioned in my preview and predictions video, the Mexico City circuit is at altitude. The circuit is situated over 2 kilometers above sea level, and this means that the air is much thinner than what the teams and drivers are used to. The thinner air means that the teams have to put on Monaco levels of wings, just to provide Monza levels of downforce. And you can see that as you look at Alex Elbon here, he was able to reach 342 kilometers per hour during his qualifying run in practice today, which is only eight kilometers down on Carlos Sainz's top speed from qualifying in Monza, which you can see here. But as this photo shows, Albon is clearly running a lot more downforce than Sainz was in Monza. Another factor with the thinner air is the cooling and the cars are really struggling to keep cool. Because of this, we've seen the teams running much more aggressive cooling loaves and also we've seen the teams opening up the bodywork as much as they possibly can to try and maximize the cooling. This may help keep the cars a little bit more cool, but in doing so, they are reducing efficiency of their cars when it comes to overall performance, as opening up the cooling does lead to an increase in drag. So the question is from today, which midfield teams are looking good and which teams are not looking so good? Well, one team that's currently not looking too strong is Haas, as they are still trying to understand their concept. And you can see that as Hulkenberg end of the day in 15th, and Magnussen was down in 19th place. And for Haas, as we've seen, they are going some extreme measures when it comes to opening up their car to maximise cooling. And this could be something that is really hindering them when it comes to overall performance. Let's take a look at the times of Hulkenberg in P15 and Joe, who is in P13. The Haas is, as we typically see very fast down the straight, and you can visibly see that Hulkenberg reaches a higher top speed than Joe, but really this is where the positives end for Haas when against Alfa Romeo. As soon as they enter the twisty section of the circuit, you can see instantly that Hulkenberg cannot carry the same amount of speed as Joe Guan Yu, and he starts to fall away. Joe carries more speed into corners and also through the corners as well, as the Alfa Romeo over one lap is looking pretty strong, and you can see that as Bottas finished the day in the top 5, which is very impressive. Rather unfortunately for Haas, it does not look a whole lot better when it comes to the longer runs either. They are a bit behind their rivals this weekend, and I have a feeling it is down to the team, which is the smallest team in the field, taking longer than usual to understand their upgrades, which you would expect given the Haas team is smaller than the rest. One team that is looking strong so far in the midfield is the Alpha Tauri team, as Daniel Ricciardo had an incredible day and finished in 6th place, which is really impressive. Going into this weekend, I mentioned in my preview and predictions video that Alpha Tauri were likely going to have a good weekend due to the Honda Power Unit enjoying the altitude more than their rivals. And so far, that looks like it could very well be the case. Unfortunately for his teammate Sonoda, he is starting from the back of the field due to taking a power unit penalty, but right now they are looking strong. Ricardo even finished ahead of Hamilton, so let's take a look at the times of the two drivers, and when you take a look at them, you can see that there is very little to tell between Hamilton and Ricardo, which is not something we usually see. Typically, there is a massive difference between Mercedes and Alfa Tauri, but I believe that due to the strengths of the Honda power unit, the deficit that we usually see is being wiped out. Now, this is only practice, but right now, things are looking strong. In the longer runs as well, you can see he's pretty impressive. Remember that he did his long run on the hard tyres, but yet he is comparable to those on medium tyres. And for AlphaTauri, this could be very good. We may even see them take the fight to Williams in the closing races if they can continue with this sort of form. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 5k subs, and I would really appreciate it if you help me get there. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams, and let's start with Aston Martin. 
For Aston Martin so far this weekend, it has been a nightmare and they are a long way off the pace. We saw a big error from Fernando Alonso where he lost the back end, but thankfully for him he was able to keep it out of the wall. Aston look like they are really struggling for any balance so far, and you can see that right now they are slow. Neither Stroll or Alonso set a time on soft tyres, which has probably made things worse than they really are. But in FP1, they were not that great either. In FP2, they finished in P18 and P20. And as we don't really have any fast laps to look at, let's right now compare the long runs of Alonso to Piastri. Note here, Piastri was on hard tyres, whereas Alonso was on mediums. And what we see here is not a pretty sight for Aston Martin fans. Alonso is consistently slower than Piastri, despite being on the steps off the tyres. And for Aston Martin... They are now even slower than the Alpine team, at least right now. For McLaren going into this weekend, there was a worry from them that they may not be as competitive as they have been at previous races, and that they would suffer more from the altitude. Right now though, that does not seem to be the case, as Lando Norris was the closest driver to Max Verstappen, and was only 0.1 seconds off of the Dutch driver, so let's compare the two. Down the straight, you can see that Red Bull has their usual advantage down the straights as Verstappen is able to pull away from Norris. However, McLaren is actually capable of carrying more speed at the apex of corners and starts to claw back time against the Red Bull through those corners, which once again goes to show how McLaren have improved their downforce and balance of the car as the season has progressed. Going into the stadium section, Norris is actually briefly faster than Verstappen, showing that McLaren have great grip in low speed corners, which is something they were really struggling a lot with at previous races. This was really impressive by McLaren, but what is even more impressive is that when it comes to the long runs, McLaren and Norris were actually able to go faster than Verstappen in the Red Bull. Now this could have been down to fuel load, but it does show that McLaren are in a great position to take the fight to the Mighty Bulls and maybe even spoil the parade for Sergio Perez. For Ferrari, Mexico so far has been a bit of a strange weekend. In FP1, there was issues for both Sainz and Leclerc, and in FP2, Sainz was struggling for pace and found himself down in P11, whilst Leclerc was P3. Let's take a look at their two times and compare to see where Leclerc had the edge over Carlos. Right now, it looks as if Sainz is maybe struggling for traction a little bit more than Leclerc, and you can see that as Leclerc makes up time on the exit of corners, as you can see as his trace overlaps Sainz, meaning he is getting better traction. Over the long runs is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Early on in the stint, it seems like Leclerc has an edge over Sainz, but as the laps wear on, Sainz becomes a faster driver, maybe showing that right now he has better tyre wear, or he is looking after the tyres a little bit better than Charles Leclerc. As usual with these two, it will be exciting to see how it unfolds because it's going to be very, very close. But right now, Ferrari are actually in a decent position. For Mercedes, the Mexican Grand Prix so far has been a bit difficult as the Silver Arrows is really struggling with some balance issues that they will need to iron out before qualifying. And because of these issues, Hamilton was only able to post time fast enough for 7th and Russell was down in 10th place. When you take a look at the fastest times of Hamilton and Leclerc, you can really see where the balance issues are for Hamilton. In the slower speed corners, Hamilton is struggling, which tells me he does not have a great deal of mechanical grip right now. In the higher speed corners, it's not quite as bad, but with him sliding more through the corners, he will be damaging his tyres more, which will affect him in the Grand Prix. In the longer runs, as usual, Hamilton is more or less there with Leclerc. Mercedes right now have a balance that they need to improve, and if they can do that, then I see no reason why they cannot get involved in the fight with Norris and Verstappen at the front, because I do believe that Mercedes will be in a better position than Ferrari if they can just sort out the balance. And finally for Red Bull, today, Max Verstappen, it's been business as usual. Fastest in practice, but we've already spoken about that. That being said, in race trim, Norris was also faster than Verstappen, but again, we've also already spoken about that. But what about his teammate, Sergio Perez? Well, this is his home race. Perez today finished in 5th place. So let's take a look at the times of Perez in 5th and Bottas in 4th. When you take a look at these times, things are rather even between the two early on in the lap. In the slower speed section, there is little to tell, and the same goes for the high speed section as well. 
Bottas really did set a great lap today. Perez was finding the edge going into the stadium section, but unfortunately for him, it all came undone as Bottas got a better exit from the Perotalda, meaning that he actually beat Perez today. For Perez right now, he is not so far away from Verstappen, and that's actually a good start, but he just needs to make sure that he can stay with him as the weekend progresses, and I am sure that Red Bull will be giving him absolutely everything to do just that. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.